My wife and I had been married for two years, and at the time, we were both in our early twenties. She had a strong desire for motherhood, often sending me messages about it multiple times a day. Her relentless TikTok mentality started to influence our relationship as she began sending me information about open marriages and podcasts discussing the topic. After numerous lengthy conversations where she passionately advocated for exploring an open marriage, I reluctantly agreed. She was insistent that we should try this lifestyle before settling down and having children. We decided to establish some ground rules to make this experiment work. No unprotected intimacy. No intimate encounters in our house, and no overnight stays. If either of us had intimacy relations with someone else, no details were to be shared, and we would refrain from physical contact with each other for 30 days. Before any intimacy between us resumed, we both had to undergo a doctor's visit and receive a clean bill of health. With these rules in place, we embarked on the journey of an open marriage. My wife began going on dates on Friday nights, which worked well for us since I often worked late and got home around 10 p.m. In the beginning, it seemed like a fun adventure. When she returned from her dates, she would excitedly recount what had happened, and we would often become intimate. These were purely dates, with no intimacy activities involved. I also decided to give it a shot and went on three dates myself. Unfortunately, each of them ended in a similar way. Once the women I met discovered I was married and in an open relationship, they lost interest, and our connections fizzled out. However, things took a painful turn one Friday night when my wife didn't return home until around three in the morning. She made a casual remark about being too sore and tired for any physical intimacy, and I couldn't help but notice hickey marks on her chest and thighs. It was a blow to my emotions, and I felt hurt and upset by this discovery. The following Monday or Tuesday, she attempted to initiate physical intimacy with me, but I reminded her of rule number three, the 30-day waiting period after sexual encounters with others. She was shocked and asked if I was serious. My response was unwavering. I was deadly serious. This situation became a pattern in our relationship. She would go out on Friday nights, have her fun, and then spend the rest of the week trying to convince me to change rule number three. To me, it felt like she had placed me on a shelf while she enjoyed her new relationship energy. I started distancing myself from her spending more time working, being out of the house, and becoming more physically active to deal with the emotional turmoil. Five months of feeling like I was merely an afterthought in our marriage had taken its toll. I could no longer see a compelling reason to stay in this relationship. I felt like I was sacrificing my own happiness so that she could be content in her new situation, and I was running out of things to give. Despite everything, up to this point, she had not broken any of the established boundaries. However, every time I suggested that she should take a step back from her new partner, she brushed it off as an overreaction, insisting that it was all just some harmless fun. The strain on our relationship was becoming unbearable, and I knew that something had to change. As time went on, our relationship continued to unravel. It felt like my concerns were dismissed, with my wife insisting that I was overreacting and that her new relationship was just a bit of harmless fun. Our fourth wedding anniversary was a painful turning point. I had taken the day off work to make her dinner and clean the house, hoping to celebrate the special occasion. When she got home from work, she quickly showered and dressed up, telling me she was going to a bar to see a local band and asking me not to wait up. Little did I know, she had completely forgotten about our anniversary. The devastation I felt when I woke up the next morning at nine and she still hadn't returned was indescribable. This was a clear violation of our second boundary, no sleeping over. I sent her a simple text, expressing my disappointment and letting her know that she had broken our agreed-upon rule. I also told her I was done. 
Her response came at 11.30 when she started calling and apologizing, claiming that she had merely closed her eyes for a second and accidentally passed out. She insisted it was an accident and that it would never happen again. But I was unwilling to engage in any discussion about it, which only seemed to awaken her from the fob she had been in. She showed up at my workplace just before we opened, creating a scene in front of my colleagues and the owners. It took considerable effort, but I managed to calm her down enough for her to leave. We agreed to discuss the situation on Sunday. When I got home from work that night, she once again tried to initiate physical intimacy, but I reminded her of rule number three. It was then that she told me she would no longer see her new partner and wanted to close the marriage, focusing on reconnecting with me. It seemed that she had a change of heart, perhaps realizing her mistake when she received my text and her new partner made fun of her. She made daily efforts to be intimate with me, but it was clear that our connection had been irreparably damaged. I no longer desired her in the same way and she had become more of a roommate than a partner. As the 30-day waiting period passed, she went to the doctor for the required checkup, confirming that she was free of diseases. However, she had one more shocking announcement to make, she was pregnant. Her announcement was met with an unexpected response from me. I told her that I hoped she and her new partner would be happy together. Her confusion quickly turned into tears and a few days later, she sent her new partner a text telling him about the pregnancy. His response was callous, suggesting she pass it off as my child. It was then that I decided to file for divorce. Despite her desperate attempts to change my mind, making promises, begging, pleading, and offering everything under the sun to fix our relationship, I had reached a point of no return. I found myself stuck living with her until our lease was up, and our interactions became strained. She continued to try to be intimate with me, but I consistently turned her down. My resentment grew, much like her growing baby bump. It was a painful chapter in our lives, and I couldn't help but hope that we would both find a way to move forward separately, leaving behind the hurt and disappointment of our failed open marriage. Three weeks ago, an already turbulent situation took yet another turn. My wife came into my room one evening, bearing pizza for dinner. She began the conversation by sharing her excitement about being pregnant and how it had left her feeling super excited all the time. Once again, she attempted to initiate physical intimacy with me. By this point, I had run out of patience and politeness. I couldn't bear to go through with it anymore, and I bluntly told her that I wasn't interested, suggesting that she try Tinder or some other avenue where she might find someone willing. She left my room in tears. Around the same time, we had our first divorce hearing, and the judge ordered us to attend six weeks of marriage counseling. It felt like a pointless exercise almost like a meet-and-greet session where they talked to us separately to gather our sides of the story. All I wanted was for this ordeal to be over so that we could finally move on with our lives. My birthday was approaching, and on the Friday before it, she asked me to spend it with her to celebrate. I declined her invitation, unable to muster any enthusiasm for the idea. She kept pushing the subject, and I eventually lost my temper. I told her that I no longer wasted special occasions on her, referencing our disastrous fourth anniversary celebration when she had gone out to be with someone else. Leaving her in tears in the kitchen, I headed to work, informing her that I would see her on Monday for our court-ordered counseling session. Monday morning, I arrived at the counseling session, but she never showed up. I tried to reach her, her friends, and her parents but there was no response. It turned out she had been arrested on Sunday morning for driving under the influence and reckless endangerment. In a surprising turn of events, I offered my house as a place for her and her family to stay. I even had a couch available at a friend's house. My lawyer swiftly acted to expedite the divorce proceedings, 
and the divorce was finalized this past Friday. Yesterday, I helped pack some of her belongings, and today, I'm assisting them in loading a U-Haul they've rented. She is scheduled to be released tomorrow, and her family plans to take her back home with them. She wants to see me, but I can't shake the feeling that any further contact would only be detrimental for both of us. It's been an emotionally exhausting chapter in our lives, marked by turmoil and unfortunate decisions, and it's clear that we both need to find a way to move on separately and begin the process of healing and rebuilding our lives. If you like the story, please hit the like button and subscribe for more stories.